This is the two top tables, by the way, everyone. So uh, they'll be fighting for first place, and uh, which is very important in the playoffs because it means we'll be on the play through the whole thing. And there we go. We are in, which is also very, very exciting. And now let's to figure out who goes on the play and on the draw. Ten. I, I definitely feel the uh, Azorius deck being a low to ground aggressive deck wants to be on the play. For sure. And being a mid range deck, you also want to be on the play so that way you can um, keep the tempo away. That's a tough keep. That's a one lander. And that is a six lander. Mmm. That is both very tough keeps. Wow, the Azorius deck is going to keep that. And so is. Okay, here we go. He ditched a land and he didn't get his second land. Oh no. This is going to be very tough if um, a cute snake can't find a second land. Uh, this could be the end. This game, this game could be, oh, there it is. But is it too late? Hmm. I would still play it out and see how it goes. I would still play it out and see how it goes. I mean, you definitely hear, uh, yeah. You're playing a creature so that way you can um, trade in combat. I love this angel. This angel, as soon as your uh, creature dies, it comes back to your hand. Which I think is absolutely incredible. Absolutely incredible. And of course, because of that, he didn't trade off with him. So he's going to bounce the angel. Attack for three. Wow, not having mana is definitely going to hurt. Having a Vigilance creature is always helpful. Uh, the Aspirant here is going to allow... Wow, he didn't stick it on the wolf. I was going to say it's going to allow him to uh, make the wolf bigger and then take off the counters and sacrifice his opponent's board. Which he may regret doing because we all see that he has a lot of two mana creatures. Wow, that is a, a 5-3 fire. Ooh, Vanishing Verse is, uh, is a very good play here. Do you go after the artifact or do you go after the creature? Huh. So he didn't play to the board, which tells me that he wants to use Vanishing Verse. I'm curious to see how he's going to use it. Spectral advisory. I think when that comes into play, it can protect something. So vanishing verse is going to go after the artifact. Turning this into a three one and way more effective way to block and trade with. Yeah, that's pretty cool. That was a very good play. That was a very good play. I think he's just too far behind. Does he chump block here? Do you chump block? Are you dead on board? Nope. Four, seven. Uh. My apologies for that delay. I'm oh. back. 
It's all good. It's all good. Uh, a cute snake. So they both mauled their first hands, and then uh, mine milled uh, had six lands and a creature, and a cute had one land and all creatures, and this is the result. Well, it sure looks like it. Hey. Well, that's only game one. Yeah, it is so only lots game of one. opportunity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm I'm over here on uh, on Tim Mind Mills uh, Mind Mill screen here. At one of March of Otherworldly Light, excellent little removal spell, and that farewell was going to be very useful. Obviously, looking at um, looking at these lists here, I'm just going to quickly pull up this Azorius Tempo list. Very creature heavy. Not uh, not too many counter spells in the main, but no. post board two test of talents, two negate. Uh, those are going to come in really handy, and three malevolent hermits as well. So that farewell, a little less impactful. Uh, unfortunately for uh, for Archer on the Azorius Tempo, their 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 creatures are really really low to the ground. Yeah. So those path apparels are going to be very effective. Yeah. So I think I think the way that uh, that mind mill is sideboarding here, that Faithbound Judge, such a <laughs> such a ridiculous card, just like a, another way of utilizing your graveyard, and just ending the game on a different axis. <clears throat> this Azorius Temple list doesn't really have a way of dealing with that Faithbound Judge if it comes out uh, during a late game. So it's just like another another win condition. Uh, yeah, but I think the Azorius deck is definitely trying to go underneath. Oh, absolutely. <clears throat> but then you see this hand yeah. for the Abzan list that I'm looking at, and uh, that, that answers all of the questions. You could start with the farmland tapped, go swamp, and you just start picking stuff off. And the Serolf? Oh, goodness. Like, what do we see? Oh, no. And there's the double black to cast Path Apparel. So I, I assume a Spectral Adversary is going to get flashed in here. We'll see. But I do really like this this style of deck, even if uh, even if Azorius doesn't take this one down. The way that this deck is built is very similar to the Azorius Temple lists that were played in Worlds. Mm. And I, I really like that. I really like the Wandering Emperor as a flash threat. And just, it closes out the game. Yep. If you curve out properly, and just get to a point where you've got your one, two drops and you have a three drop cast or like an Adeline or something. Turn four, Wandering Emperor, you're just giving your creature first strike and uh, buffing it up with a plus one, plus one counter. And like the games are over. It plays out actually pretty similar to Mono White, but then you have access to cards like Spell Pierce. I love Spell Pierce. Oh, me too. I'm so happy that it's in this format. And I think it's just going to be a player as, uh, as we get into eight set standard. Yep, I totally agree. Totally agree. I like having a fading hope here, regardless of how we place the board. So I'm gonna pop over and take a look at a cute snake. And just see here. Yeah, so the fading hope, actually the Brutal Cathar is great too. Mm -hmm. uh, what's good about the Brutal Cathar is it can hit the Aspirant and Path of Peril is not going to connect on it. So I think Brutal Cathar is just the move. Uh, worst comes to worst, you're just resetting the counter on the Luminarch Aspirant if you do lose your creature. So we'll see what comes down. It's such a sneaky play. A eh? fading hope is like, you know, it, it's not a counter spell, but it counters your removal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, just looking at a cute snake here. I mean, the the opening hand for Mind Mill was great. Unfortunately, they missed that fourth land. Yep. And now this Moon Rage Brute's going to be a four four. With protection and Valorous stance, March of Swirling Mist, and the fading hope can just. Uh, Bounce this Yashar if it comes down. I think I think it's looking a little rough. Oh, we'll see. There could be some more. Yeah, so we're gonna Actually I think the move is fading hope this Luminarch Aspirant. Or you can just phase it out. Whatever you're feeling.
but I would honestly just hit it with the Fading Hope. Keep the Usher. Nah. And then not cast the Luminar Gasparin. Or cast it. So you get the counter. Uh, unfortunately, your Brutal Cathar is going to transform back into a regular 3-3. And that, like, that 3 life could actually make a difference. Um, just with the ward. Yep. We'll see. Yeah, I just put it on the Brute and swing in for 4. Absolutely. You just want to get the damage in there. And yeah, in exactly. a race like this, uh, you have nothing to lose, right? Yeah. And like my thought process was, yeah, so now you can't protect your Brutal Cathar. If you kept that 4 mana up, or 3 mana up, sorry, you, uh, you, you bounce their creature, or you bounce your own creature back with the Luminar Gasparin, but then you have Valorous Dance, so you can just protect it. Double triggers. So let's see. Trigger, trigger. I mean, we got a 3 3 Aspirin. But, like, here's the thing Path of Peril's right there. Yeah. Um, what Mind Mill doesn't know is that there's a March of Swirling Mist and a Valor Stance. So, we're going to lose the board. Exile one of your Asp. Well, um, phase out one of your Aspirins. I think you. Okay. Just give it indestructible. I guess it does the same thing. At least well, this way he can uh, try and remove something on the opposite end. Try and get more I damage. I mean, yeah, through. you phase it out. I, I just think if you phase out your Aspirin, you know that Yasharn could come down. And Valor Stance kills the Yasharn. Mm. That's a really good point. Yeah, I mean, protecting the Aspirin here just makes sense. Keep them both up, phase them out, and now you're just going to start boasting. Eventually, you're just going to have lethal. That's going to come a lot sooner than you think. Yeah, if there isn't another path of peril, I think it's just game. Agreed. And there isn't. But, oh no, it's still it's too far out. He got his fourth land way too late. Yeah. He's got yeah, a massacre was... in hand, but it's not enough. No, it's not enough. One more land that it would have been honestly a bit of a blowout. Yeah. Let's see, yeah. So this vampire can only block. We'll, we'll see where the counter goes. But I think you just put it on the 1-1 the one -one, and then no matter what, you're getting in for 5. Right. Yeah, so you block the 4-3 here and you're still taking 5. So what looked really perfect for the Abzan deck, uh, just you just stumble. Sometimes you miss the lands, and that's it. Yeah, I I, oh. I I totally agree. I like the fact that it's going to game three though, and, and that's just it, right? Like it doesn't matter if you have the best deck in standard or whatever format. If you flood out or don't have mana, you're just not going to win games. Yeah, you stumble, and that's it, right? Yeah, it's um, very unfortunate. Yeah, now for this tempo list, like I like the inclusion of Kyodai, uh, the four mana three three flying uh, flash, which is huge. It can come in to just eat an attacker. It also gives a creature indestructible for as long as you, or a permanent, uh, sorry, indestructible for as long as you're controlling Kyodai. Um, I think that card is just excellent in a list like this. Right. And just having another angle of tempo and and being able to commit to the board. And something like that, like a three-three flyer, isn't a joke. No. Um, you can you can close games out really quickly. But I also really like the way that um, a cute snake is just getting rid of their Adelines for game three. They're not on the play. Adelines an aggressive card. I it think is. that's the move. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to switch back over to Tim. But firstly, seeing uh, oh, that was a brutal. I mean, seeing this opener for the tempo list, uh, we've got an adversary. We've got two adversaries: one, one white, one blue. Ooh, multi five, not ideal. And then uh, the tempo list also has a spell pierce in hand, so it's it's looking pretty rough. This is a great aggressive start for the uh, for the Abzan deck, though. Absolutely. So it might uh, it might be a little bit closer. Those multi to five and a little bit of removal is really nice. So let's see. Can't spell Pierce that. 
So when Even the Marcus second aspirin that, comes down, do you put all the counters on one? Uh, I guess not. Ooh, that fading hope off the top. Yeah, that was pretty. Uh... And a scry. Damn. What would I do? I think I would just load them all on one creature. Uh, diversifying your threats isn't the best. I mean, this Vanishing Burst right now is dead, having that green mana up. Uh, but I'm pretty sure a Spectral Adversary is just going to come down and start uh, start whacking away. But we'll see. It's only a 2-1. If another Black Source is found, like if an Intrepid Adversary comes down, uh, and then a, a, another Black Source is found for Mind Mill, like, you're not in a bad spot. We'll see. Yeah, there we go. They didn't find their land drop. Not the ideal land, but Aspirant can come down, and now it's a 4-4 four, four swinging in. You just exile. Okay, I don't mind that play. Swinging in for three, so you have the tempo advantage, and we'll see if uh, we'll see if a snake finds a land. Doesn't look that way. But they're holding up spell pierce mana. Which will count the, counter the Wandering Emperor, but it cannot counter the Luminar Casperin. So it looks like a swing for five is going to be coming down, and that's a lot of. Oh, well, okay. So swing for four. But diversifying your threats, spreading the power out, and let's see. Oh, brutal. All right, so we got another another blue mana. Cathar coming down. So Vanishing Verse is relevant. It'll have that. Another another black source would be great. Oh. Brutal for for our uh Abzan player here. Mm -hmm. He's just not having any good uh good luck with the cards in this game, which is very unfortunate because you know, right up until this moment, he's gone 4 0. Of course, it's it's the um it's the caster curse. <laughs> the caster curse? Yeah, whenever you're on the feature match, you always play a little bit worse, so you get a little bit more unlucky. <laughs> but he's this is the second time. Oh, there's the land. Is it enough? Well, let's see. You swing in for three. I don't think a flash creature is going to come down. And I think you hope your opponent just taps out and you can try to resolve this Wandering Emperor the next Yeah. Time. I don't think you try to jam it. You know your opponent's playing spell beers. So let's see. Yeah, it's pretty tricky. Yeah, so. He's not going to tap out. No, there's no way. I mean, you still have to try to resolve the one there, Emperor end step, or right now, and that's going to get countered. He can. <sighs> <laughs> He still has Negate. Oh, brutal. And uh, March of the Swirling Mist and uh, various stance in his hand. So, um, yeah, this, this is, is going to get negated. Um, and that's the thing with these temple lists. You can't stumble. No. Like, even no. if you, yeah, like that Fading Hope off the top um, from a cute snake was. Yeah. Pretty much everything they wanted to see. Yeah. You got rid of that tempo play with the Luminar Casperin, and now all of a sudden you're staring down four damage. Oh wow. So he's gonna attack for two. Uh I'm I, I, I see why he's not boasting, but he's he's leaving up either a removal spell or uh, a phase spell. Wow, that meat hook massacre off the top is huge. Very huge. Now, there's a March of Swirling Mist that can hit probably the Brutal Cathar. Which it has to. You have to protect him. But you don't but have a choice. All of a sudden, if that swings in the next turn, Wandering Emperor just exiles it, and you've got a creature on board. Yeah, all right. But you still need to... Ugh. I mean, Mind Mill gains two life, which is huge. That Hall of the Storm Giants is relevant. But he didn't Let's have enough see. mana yet, though, to cast it, right? <gasps> no. 
Wow, soaring off the top too. Wow, we have a game. So that trigger was the um, the Hall of the Storm Giants. Now this uh, this Cathar is not going to transform yet. I'm surprised that he went for um, Soren because Soren doesn't trade with that creature with either creatures. Yeah, th well, that's the thing. The brute was the brute tapped. It transformed, so it still costs you three. I think what's going to happen here is Wandering Emperor will come down. You exile that creature. Yeah, unfortunately, the Path of Peril, you just can't cast it yet. No. But what you can do... Actually, yeah, so you're going to get the Aspirant back. Uh, you're going to lose three life, but at least you have a Chump Blocker for this hull. Pretty good position to be in. And now, I only imagine the hall is going to swing in. You chump. And you can make a 2-2 two -two to chump and hope that you survive. And if you could just get a steady line of chump blockers, this uh, Meat Hook Master is just going to drain your opponent. <laughs> I mean, it's... Awesome to see that he's getting mana, but I don't think that's what he wants right now. No, any not kind at this of, point. No, any kind of creature would have been preferred. There goes the Wanderer. Yeah, I mean, we just got to find something now. If we're, if we're Mind Mill, we've kind of clung on to this game so much. So this Path of Peril is going to be... Actually, this Path of Peril is going to be really good. It's going to stabilize, uh, stabilize Mind Mill a little bit. Swing in for two is probably not going to get blocked. Oh, oh these no. lands. Uh, obviously, when you don't need them, you find them, right? Right. I think I think the play is just swing in for two. And then you just cast Path, path of Peril. And then hope your opponent doesn't have a March of Swirling Mist or a Negate in hand. Because mm. then you kill two creatures, you get in for two, and then you're draining for one more, you're gaining two life. And then you're just on top decks and hope that Hall of the Storm Giants... Okay, so it's a block. So is that a Valorous stance? It is. I saw that coming. Brutal. That is going to be <laughs> lethal. Yeah. So yeah, even if you cast the Path of Peril... That's it. Wow, what a match. So Acute Snake is our 5-0 player. And I mean, kudos to Mind Mill for just trying to hang in there and, and do their best. Kudos for sure. That was uh He definitely gave it his all. That was that was tough. 